Okay. Uh, dear participants, welcome to the second webinar uh, of the second module uh, of the training program within the Zero Waste Cities in Ukraine project. Uh, our webinar today will be about management of bio waste and textile waste, uh, European case studies. A little housekeeping rules. Uh, as per usual, uh, the webinar is being recorded. Please, during the meeting, can you uh, keep your camera off on if it's possible and the microphone off if you are not speaking. Use the Q&A window for, the, for your questions. You can use it and type it in any language, Ukrainian or English. Q&A session will be at the end of the webinar. During this, the webinar recording will be turned off. Also, uh, use the raise hand feature if you would like to speak during the Q&A session. And as I said earlier, you can use the translation feature if necessary. So today's agenda, uh, we will start with greetings and introduction of speakers. Then we will talk about bio waste prevention, reduction, collection, and treatment. We will um, get to know a case study of Hamburg, Germany. Then we will move to bio waste prevention, reduction, collection, and treatment, a case study of Oreiras, Portugal. And we will finish with bio waste and textile waste, also prevention, reduction, collection, and treatment, a, a case study of Guimarães, Portugal. And we will have 30 minutes Q&A session with our speakers. Uh, webinar moderators, you already know us. Uh, my name is Elena Perdanos. I will be with you as moderator of this uh, webinar. And also we have Ola Riz and Ola Bilonishka that will help uh, with technical um, issues. So webinar speaker, uh, first uh, we will have uh, Brita Peters. She is senior advisor at the Hamburg Institute for Innovation and Climate Protection and Circle Economy. Uh, today also we have Joanna Gomez, technician at the Environmental Management Division, Oreira City Council, Portugal, and Francisco Ferreira, environmental engineer and sustainable senior sustainable technician at the Environment and Sustainability Department of Guimarães City Council, Portugal. So without any further delay. I will stop my screen and I invite Brita Peters, our Brita Peters, sorry, our first uh, speaker. Uh, the floor is yours. Please uh, share your screen and welcome to start. Perfect. Can see your screen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Brita Peters. I'm from Hamburg. Um, no, I just need to find out how I click. Just a second. Ah, here. Um, Hamburg is the second biggest city in Germany, in the north of Germany, a big city with a port, um, a little bit less than 2 million inhabitants. And um, I work for HEIS, this institute with a very long name, Hamburg Institute for Innovation, Climate Protection and Circular Economy. And we are a subsidiary company of the cities solid waste um, and cleaning company. So um, our mother company has more than 4,000 employees and serves the whole city of Hamburg with regards to solid waste collection um, and treatment. Also, I mean, residual waste, but today I'm going to focus on the bio waste collection. So it's about 1 million households that are connected to the bio waste collection in Hamburg. Um, here you see the whole setup. So we have the subsidiary, uh, sorry, the mother company and a couple of subsidiary companies. This includes also treatment plants like waste incineration plants or the composting and biogas plant that I'm going to introduce today, but also companies like secondhand stores where people can buy reused clothes and furniture and household items. And the whole tasks of our company also include um, winter services. We run and operate and build public toilets in the city of Hamburg, street cleaning, cleaning of parks, playgrounds. Um, we have recycling centers, so 12 stations spread over the cities where people can um, return their bulky waste, for example, or hazardous waste. Um, and then we have two waste incineration plants. This is just a graphic um, to show the, the history of the, 
of the waste collection yeah, journey, I would say. So in Hamburg, we had the very first waste incineration plant in 1896 because of the cholera pandemic at that time. Many people died and they had an issue of just getting rid of the, um, of the hazardous waste. Um, but we had a lot of landfills, more than 50,000. But you can see with the, with the large red X that since 1999, um, no untreated waste is allowed to go to a landfill anymore in Germany. And um, the green bin shows that since 1994, we do collect bio waste separately in Hamburg. And um, then you have the different legislation. Here's the Circular Economy Act um, that always yeah, increases the measures and the goals and the objectives of treating household waste in Hamburg. In Hamburg, household waste is collected at, yeah, at the house <laughs> at the household level for four different fractions. So it's the residual waste, the bio waste, the paper waste, and the plastic waste. And you can see that the residual waste has been gone down over the last years. The amount of bio waste uh, is getting up. Paper waste is a kind of up and down and plastic waste collected is also increasing. As mentioned earlier on, since 1994, we do collect the bio waste separately and we have this four bin system. So every household, if there is enough space in the, in the um, garden or in the backyard or front yard, um, has a black bin for the residual waste, bin, uh, waste, a yellow one for the recyclables, a blue one for paper and cardboard and the green one for bio waste. And additionally, we have these 12 stations in the city where people can also bring different other fractions like bulky waste and hazardous waste but also garden waste so larger amounts that don't fit into the green bin or wooden biomass and yeah even though we have bio waste collection since 1994 it still is not as yeah it's not running as smoothly and as great as we would wish it would run so there are from time to time or continuously actually campaigns being run to educate the citizens how to separate their bio waste and um, what to put into the bio waste bin and to raise awareness and educate um, citizens um, and try different approaches and as you can see also in different languages because Hamburg is a very intercultural international city. This is a picture of our biogas and composting plant. It's uh, owned by, by Stadtreinigung Hamburg, so by our mother company. And um, it's guaranteeing the safe disposal of the bio waste. And it's also utilizing the bio waste that is going in for fermentation and energy production. So the bio waste first goes in for two weeks. Um, just see, yeah, here you can see it. We have the big trucks that bring the bio waste there's a small sorting plant and it goes into these fermenters that you can see in the top right corner for two weeks to produce biogas from the bio, uh, bio waste and after the two weeks it goes into the big hall um, and stays there um, yeah to produce compost out of it and the compost that is being produced we sell to farmers nearby um, citizens can also buy smaller amounts, but the majority goes to farmers. Um, and the biogas that is being produced goes into the gas grid. And for us, it has a big advantage because um, to store the solar energy or wind energy is always more difficult. But if you can um, yeah, put the, uh, the biogas that is being produced into the gas grid, it's storable um, green energy. Yeah, but as I mentioned, the quality or both actually quality and quantity that is being selected um, is not really great. We have issues of the decom uh, of like um, 
up having things in the bio waste bin that are not supposed to be there. A big issue is plastic bags. People do collect bio waste in their household in plastic bags. And um, then they throw it with the plastic bag into the bin. And in our composting plant, the plastic bags, bags even though if they are recyclable, fully biodegradable plastic, bin, plastic bags, they still contaminate the compost. It's very tiny little plastic particles that the eye can't really see, um, but it's going onto the field if we don't take it out. And the sorting plant can take some out, but it's a big effort and there's always something in And People also throw other things into the bio waste bin. Um, so there are a couple of measures that have been implemented um, to improve the quality and the quantity of the bio waste bins. Um, here you see some pictures of the biodegradable plastic bags. It's something that citizens buy because they want to be sustainable, yeah, have sustainable practice and behavior. They want to do something good, but often they don't know that this is still a problem for us in, in our composting plant and in most of them. And you can see that sometimes the plastic does not fully decompose. So what we have been doing is producing paper bags with a kind of little wax coating inside. Because the normal paper bags you can use, it's no problem. But often if you live in an apartment building and you have to carry it down to the waste bin, um, it gets wet and then it's not a really stable bag. So we have been doing tests with coated paper bags and now they are available in the in the city for free and citizens can use it. And that has, um, if people use them, then this makes a big difference. Um, here you can see also, again, also the quality then is, is really good inside. So what can go into the composting plant is kitchen waste and um, also garden waste. We really like the kitchen waste because that is very good for the for the biogas production. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes the issue is that in neighborhoods with single family housing, people put the garden waste in, but not the kitchen waste. So we really try also to educate and say, well, we want your kitchen waste because it has this high caloric, caloric value for the biogas production. Um, as mentioned, we have these challenges still, even though the system is running since more than 20 years or even 30 years. And I want to show you, um, this is another EU project, or actually it's two different EU, EU projects that we implemented a couple of years ago, where we tried to develop innovative solutions to improve the bio waste collection. Um, and as you can see, <laughs> the black bins, as mentioned earlier, was a residual waste. The yellow is the recyclables, blue is paper and cut board waste and the green one is the bio waste. So there's a tiny little bin um, somewhere hidden in the corner that citizens hardly see and that is not very attractive. And the ma majority of bins is for residual waste bin. And um, so the challenges that we, that we collect, it is often waste collection has not such a great priority among uh, citizens and also not among planners or urban planners or the housing agency. This is a larger housing complex. And um, in particular then, if it's about separate waste collection, the priority is not that high. We have in Hamburg a lot of competition between public spaces or parcel lockers or shared mobility services. They often have get easier public space than we do. Um, and yeah, many people or some people in the in the Stadtreinigung company also say, well, if the quality is not okay, then we better don't want the bio waste. We can only use it if it has a good quality, very few uh, decatum, oh, English this morning is still sleeping, sorry. Um, so it needs to be pure and clean. And um, well, we also realized waste education starts too low. It should start earlier, for example, in kindergartens. And we were also discussing about the right way how to communicate with people. And um, this graphic just shows you 
Stadtreinigung Hamburg does every year a kind of analysis of what people throw into the waste bins, what is actually in. And the top of the graphic would show you um, what should have been in which bin. So in the yellow bin, there should been the thickness of the line shows the amount that normally would have gone into the yellow waste bin, into the blue, into the paper, um, the purple into the into the residual and this dark green one and the light green one should have gone into the bio waste bin. And you can see from the bottom graph, the very thick of all the different colors, that is what ended up in the residual waste bin. And only this tiny little green in this neighborhood. It's a large, I show you pictures on the next slide. It's a, it's a residential area with high rise buildings and a high density. It's in some other areas, it's a little better. But still, the waste volume is very high and it is all being thrown in one bin. So um, this is the area of the high rise building. 10,000 people live on a very um, yeah, dense area and have often other issues than waste collection. You can also see these are the kind of waste collection stalls that we have. And often um, the waste is also placed next to the bins. So the first thing we did is we did better signboards, not so much text because we couldn't really decide which languages to use because it's so internationally. Um, and then have more pictograms, more pictures, um, changing also dirty bins to newer bins with a sticker on. And then we did uh, several activities like this bio waste weeks where for six weeks we had um, it was in the middle of the pandemic, as you can see. So we we donated these little bins for the kitchens where people could collect the bio waste in the kitchen and the paper bags. And we had this kind of stall outside of the buildings directly in front of the doors um, and assisted people to have a look into the bio waste bin. What is inside? We measured it. We did a kind of competition who is collecting how much. And at the end, we we um, had like a raffle with cinema vouchers because often we realized it needs something else to motivate people to separate the bio waste. Um, this were the results, how many visitors came and we, we showed them. And you can see if we distribute the bio waste bags they are used much more and we had also a higher quantity and then we changed also the bin to a larger bin. So, um, but it was a lot of personal assistance. And this is a project in the, in the kindergarten, in the quarter in the neighborhood where we first taught the teachers how to separate bio waste. Then we did the same with the, with the children. Um, we had a composting facility in the playground so that they could see it. And then we did some, some planting activities with the kids to show the whole circle of the bio waste, how it's, um, how it's being first collected and then composted and then being used to grow some new veggies or little plants. And then we talked also to the, to the parents. So after, after raising awareness among the kids, then we talk to the parents um, because children are great multipliers to take things home to their parents and grandparents and tell them what they have learned and how to do it. And um, yeah, that was it for me. Um, if you have questions, just note them down. Thank you, Brita. Thank you very much. Yeah, we already have one question for you, but we will wait for Q&A session. Uh, so we can gather all the questions to our speakers. Maybe someone else uh, can add something. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was very interesting to see uh, to listen about Hamburg. And right now we'll move to Portugal. Uh, Brita, please stop sharing your screen. And we invite Jano Gomes from uh, Areiras Municipality to join us. Please try to share your screen. I think you should have a permission. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can hear you. All right. 
right, I think. Can you see the screen here? Yes, everything is perfect. Thank you yeah. very much. You can start. So a brief introduction. Introduction. Um, White is is located uh, in the Lisbon metropolitan area. We are uh, one of the municipalities who is adjacent to Lisbon. Um, we have five parishes, and uh, in terms of uh, urban waste management, they all uh, function the same. It's centralized. So the we are the ones. I don't know why is this not in presentation. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, in terms of waste management, the municipality is uh, responsible for um, um, it's responsible for all the waste which is produced and deposed in the in the territory, and we have um, some three types of layouts in, uh, in containers. We are the ones who are in the surface, uh, and we have buried ones. And in this one, the, the brown one, it's for uh, the bio waste. Uh, and this is for um, non-domestic uh, services, like florists and uh, small, small restaurants and not and non non I'm sorry um, non domestic uh, deposition we have the selective ones which are uh, yellow for plastic and metal the green one is for glass and the blue for cardboard and paper and the um, the gray one is always for the general waste deposition. We have an, uh, other specific waste, uh, waste streams that we collect too. Uh, we have textiles, we have uh, oils, we have this uh, big, we call it ecocentrum mobile, like an eco center. This is um, a type of uh, deposition system. Uh, where people um, go to deposit small things that they gather in their homes, like small batteries, the toners from the printers, um, uh, glass, which is not glass from packaging. It's not like bottles and recyclable glass. It's like plates when or glasses, broken glasses. They, they go to a different stream of collection, so they are deposed in these eco-centers. This is our, our, our metrics. We are trying to uh, really hard to uh, increase our rate of uh, bio-waste collection. It's been a challenge uh, because we, we believe that uh, in, in Portugal, generally, People are not very um, people are not very interested in recycling in general. Uh, so with the introduction of another fraction like uh, the bio waste, it's very difficult to uh, to raise awareness and to to get to people to to collaborate because if people don't do it in their households, we we cannot collect uh, the 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 bio waste. Uh, some curiosities about Wairish, we were uh, one of the first to implement uh, specific streams or, uh, of recyclables in Portugal with the, the glass campaign in 83. In 92, we started distributing uh, composting uh, bins uh, to households with uh, small gardens or backyards or front yards. Uh, we started to distribute that composting uh, bins. In 88, we started uh, to uh, recover and transport cardboard and paper uh, with uh, the selective deposition bins. Um, and in 94, we started the packaging uh, selection for plastic and metal packaging. 
so we we do uh, for the bio waste um, metrics we uh, count as well the the collection of uh, greens and and uh, stuff from from the gardens uh, in homes we have the home composting and we also do this in the uh, non domestic sector we have also these infrastructures uh, in the areas which have uh, uh, more housing with gardens so we and we we collect these uh, green residues uh, with a specific uh, circuit of uh, uh, of waste of green waste collection per se uh, in terms of uh, composting domestic composting uh, we do not collect the compost uh, people who has uh, people who have the compost in their home are responsible for the trim the tr the treatment of the the composting bin and then to use the compost as they wish we do not collect this uh, this material um, in 2012, it was the first time that we implemented a selective uh, recover of bio waste from schools, canteens, hotels, restaurants. And uh, we started this campaign with 22 entities. Um, we, we try to go like a, a door to door. Uh, door to door no. uh, to raise uh, awareness and to distribute these uh, these beans to the um, to the facilities. Around uh, twenty nineteen, yes, uh, uh, the year before the pandemic, we started uh, a, a project. Uh, who had the objective to uh, increase the numbers of bio waste collection and we moved to the domestic sector. Uh, till then, we didn't have uh, bio waste collection associated with the, the domestic sec uh, section. So, we in Portugal, we had the obligation from starting January 2024 20, 20, uh, to be responsible to provide this uh, this uh, selective collection to to people so in 2019 we started with the so-called uh, pilot project and uh, in order to increase this uh, so our goal is to reach all of the households in whitish we are uh, which are approximately uh, 86000 and the we, we also would like to cover like all schools, all um, companies and have everybody in, in the county uh, participating in this uh, separation. Um, we, we, we want to maintain the home composting project uh, with the attribution of more composting beans to the households. Uh, we need to increase also the installation of those uh, infrastructures to put the green the green waste in, um, and we want to also increase the numbers of uh, non domestic and domestic collection. So uh, in twenty nineteen, this was the idea for the the, the project. So we uh, our um, waste management also manages three more municipalities. So the treatment plant, it, it's, it's not just for Weyres, it's for Weyres and three more municipalities. Uh, they, they, they manage all, all of them at the same time. So they came up with this idea, uh, which was to um, provide homes with a little uh, bin uh, and provide them also with uh, this specific type of bags. They are plastic bags, and this is <laughs> the second challenge. For now, uh, 
uh, we are focused in distributing uh, these little bins uh, to all households and also these these green bags. So people have to put the the bio waste into the green bags and then they depose in the general waste. So uh, there's in this system there's no need to put in the streets uh, selective. Uh, uh, bins for uh, the bio waste. They, they, they can put uh, the green bag into the general waste bin because in the plant they are separated by technology. So they have um, a sensor and the green bags uh, enter uh, the plant and they go behind the sensor and automatically they are uh, separated from the general waste line because of its color. Uh, with this uh, they produce uh, compost in an industrial uh, manner, and during this, it's uh, always uh, it's also converted into uh, energy. Uh, in, with this, this is the like the bio waste kit that we provide to people in their households. So it's the green bags, the little bin, and uh, the information. We go door to door in uh, to raise awareness in uh, environmental campaigns, per se. So we try to explain people why it's so important to separate uh, uh, this type of waste, the bio waste. We give them uh, these these materials, and they um, we give explanations uh, how can they uh, cooperate to make uh, make the numbers go higher per se in in these campaigns we have uh i'm sorry to go back uh we have only six percent participation so we have more or less uh 10 percent uh, people that say i'm not interested i don't want the bean i i will not do this it's only 10 percent and, and the rest is people that we are not able to reach, houses that we are not able to reach. Um, this system has its pros and cons, like the, the green bag system. We don't need to install uh, specific bins in the, in, in, in the roads. Uh, we don't need to increase or modify the collection rate. Uh, so because people put the green bag in the in the general waste and then it's all uh, it's uh, sorted later um, and people don't need to uh, change their habits uh, we know uh, that the most difficult thing is to convince people to change their habits um, the cons it's tratolish it's the the manager the plant uh, they needed to install this technology to sort the green bags um, and uh, also a con, as I said, people uh, need to, co to, to cooperate and that's not easy. Um, we try to, uh, at the same time with the green bags um, being distributed, we began in 2022 uh, to have this alternative. So we installed 23 of these uh, selective bins. They are underground. They are only accessible by uh, RFID cards. So this bin, it's always locked uh, because we have the experience um, that if we left this bin unlocked, People would not would not uh, like uh, respect that it's just for bio waste, and we we would have many many problems of contamination in in these in these cases. So we install. Uh, okay, John, I'm sorry, uh, but we cannot hear you right now. Yeah, I think that Celso is not listening to us. Joanna, sorry, we cannot hear you. Uh, 
Okay, I don't know how to reach Joanna. Uh, Francisco, can you hear me? My mic is working. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to send her a message. Thank you. Sorry for all. We have a little bit of technical problem with Joanna. Okay, I think something went wrong with the microphone or with the headphones or something like that. Yeah, I think we already noticed. Okay, Johanna, can you hear me? Please uh, not or something like that, because I think something went wrong with your headphones. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I think Jana just just in the floor and she doesn't. Uh... She's she's not. She's probably presenting um, full mode, so she's also not watching us or looking at the chat box. Yes, I'm yes. trying to and... to figure out her phone number so that um... I can. Her, but yeah. Okay, she noticed it. Thank God. Okay. Jean, unfortunately, we cannot hear you. And I I suppose I think you cannot hear us also. Maybe you can type plug off and plug in the uh, plug on the microphone or something like that just reboot the system but i believe she cannot hear me can you hear me no yes, yes. oh we're happy to hear you I, John. I, uh, i'm sorry no no it's it's perfectly fine i, I, think I had no we idea lost what you. i had i had no idea this was happening i'm sorry <laughs> So it's fine. We we'll probably lost you like twenty two slides or something like that. Twenty two slides. Something in that area. Something in that area. Yes. Jesus, I'm sorry. No, everything is okay. So you can continue. Please. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Did you uh, there, there uh, have you some questions that I can really we, quickly? Uh... We stop hearing you on the slide of twenty two when you are talking about the bins that you are locked do, in order oh. to prevent the bio the waste contamination. contamination. Yeah, okay. and that is all probably. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. It's okay. So please continue. So it's very, very few households that are included in that system. And for the rest of the municipality, we have the green bag uh, selection. Um, so we, we try to be at local events. 
uh, to have uh, awareness campaigns. We, we settle in, in all festivities, municipality festi uh, festivities, um, music festivals, everything, you name it. In, in 2019, when, when we tried in 2019, I'm sorry, when we tried to um, start the, this project in households, like the, the domestic collection, we, we decided that we were um, doing this by phases. So we had a, a, a pilot, which uh, included only uh, roughly 4,000 uh, families, and then Uh, because we created an app that can um, help people with requests, requests for green bags, requests for the little brown containers, and requests for the uh, RFID card to, to be able to open. If they have a selective bin in their uh, area, the, they receive a RFID card to open the, the bin. So today we have uh, roughly uh, 3,000 house, uh, houses that uh, have composting containers, private composting containers. We do not collect this uh, residue. We have um, 136 users uh, in the non-domestic uh, sector, and we have 27 uh, of those infrastructures to collect the, the greens, the big greens in the, the residential areas. Uh, so uh, in, in our universe of roughly 80,000 households, we have now uh, 15,000 households uh, sorting by waste. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's still small and it's very difficult to reach uh, people, even though we have an online app to uh, interact in this project. We, all of our parish headquarters can give these uh, green bags and materials to people for them to, to start this. The municipality service buildings also um, give uh, this to, to, to citizens and it's it's hard to 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 make people join. Um, now we have um, trying to increase the number of uh, these selective uh, containers uh, because the 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 level of contamination is it's low, so it's uh, it's going well, and we are trying to convert the general waste ones to, uh, to the bio waste uh, selection. And we, we, we have this obligation now where if you have a real estate pro project uh, with uh, a high density or to, to, to house a high density uh, uh, of people, they are obligated to install these selective bins. So if they, if they construct there, they have to uh, install these bins. Um, we have to try to, to keep growing. In, in, we are growing very slowly, but we have to keep uh, uh, growing the numbers of uh, bio waste collection. And uh, this, this year we hired a um, private company to um, do door-to-door -door visitation for one year to increase the, the participation um, of, of the domestic uh, bio-waste collection. Uh, this was our inspirational note. 
uh, we, this is basically what we all uh, say in our uh, campaigns, which is people people still think that they they don't mm, like the the actions they do don't don't change uh, like uh, they they don't make a difference but actually they do if 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 all of our households uh, were to per participate and sort the bio waste and uh, put them in the the respective uh, selective bins and all of their uh, all of their uh, other uh, streams like plastic and stuff we have very little uh, recyclable rates still in Portugal um, uh, it would make uh, the future so much better to all of us thank you I don't know if you have any 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 doubts or Thank you, Joana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we have already uh, also for you questions, but we will wait for Q&A session. Okay, thank uh, you. And I'm sorry yeah. for the sound. No, everything is perfect, <laughs> actually. It was just a little minor technical issues. We can live with it. So please stop sharing your screen so we can okay. pass um, uh, to words to, uh, to Francisco and move to Guimarães in Portugal. Yeah, Francisco. Hello, good morning, floor. everyone. I'm going to share presentation. Yes, Thank you. please. Yeah, Please let me can... know if you can see it in full mode. Yeah, everything is perfect. Please proceed. Thank you. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I will also like to thank you for inviting me to, to speak at this webinar uh, as part of the Zero Waste City in the Green Project. It is with great pleasure that we also present our uh, strategies uh, on bio waste and textile waste. <clears throat> um, give you um, an overview about uh, uh, some context about our city. Our municipality is home to 156,000 inhabitants and it covers an area of 2,041 kilometers per square. Uh, we have 48 parishes and nine villages uh, and there are about 69,000 households uh, uh, and we operate with 20 different waste collection routes. Um, we produce uh, a lot of waste, uh, and the the goal by uh, uh, the goal we had by by a long time ago was to to try to reduce this uh, amount of waste, um, and uh, we already uh, got with several initiatives, as you can see uh, here in the in the in the top in the in the right uh, that uh, also allow us to to that recognize our efforts and, and also allow us to, to do more um, integrated projects. Uh, to give you uh, somehow an idea of, about our trajectory, our our journey um, has been marked by, by significant milestones. Um, we, we, we started earlier in 2013 with our first uh, paid study, a study for Peg as you throw. Uh, in the historic center, uh, and along the way, we've been doing a lot of things. <laughs> Thankfully, uh, we we develop a governance ecosystem to work on circular economy and sustainability in an overall manner. Uh, we we work a lot with uh, the landscape laboratory, which is also coordinating this project, um, and is a has a vital role in helping us educating uh, our citizens. Um, and uh, uh, in 2016, we, we, we launched the, 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 the paint in the historic center after uh, a lot of work with, uh, with uh, the citizens and uh, the stakeholders involved. Um, and along the way, we had other initiatives uh, that uh, we, so we, we tried to, to affinulate this strategy and to make it more tangible uh, in the in the in, in the way that we can close the loop 
uh, we are part uh, of the the the, the mission cities. The, we've we've been awarded with um with a EU, EU mission label, and we have several goals. Just to to let we, you know, we 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 want to to reduce eighty percent of CO two emissions uh, and to sequestrate as well twenty percent uh, within our our uh, green uh, areas, uh, and we also want to reduce. Uh, our ways to to around um, um, three thousand sixty two ki kilograms per person, um, and also we want to extend uh, the bio waste uh, collection to a hundred percent of the territory. Um, and uh, uh, another interesting thing I think we would like to 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 talk to you about is that it's really important for for us cities to to. To work uh, in different kind of focus groups, to do networking, to look for commitments because um, somehow uh, this is crucial to enhance our project capabilities. Uh, by participating in these networks, we have been able to share knowledge, to gain insights, and also to collaborate in, in new, you know, innovative solutions. Uh, although it's not the the um, the focus, I would just like to to mention that, for instance, we were able to make to make uh, echo bricks with cigarette butts, and with chewing gum, we have made uh, plant pots. Uh, with plastic, we made plastic waste. We made furniture, uh, and in terms of circular economy, these are really great initiatives that allow us also to expand our 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 the way we are going to 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 advance on circular economy um, so basically we we try to, to look at the at the waste as a product um, as a product that is biodegradable and, and decomposable um, by separating them we, we we look afterwards to do a mechanical and biological waste treatment uh, and then, uh, as uh, uh, other others have mentioned, we 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 make compost, certified compost, that then is later on used uh, on our community um, farms and and gardens. Uh, in the right, you can see um, our municipal uh, waste management strategy. We have a lot of things going on uh, related to uh, from bio waste strategies, from textile waste strategies strategies which we are working a lot right now um we we have uh, because of the net zero cities program since we are one of the uh, mission cities we are now working on climate city contracts on our climate pact and we are also looking forward to get together all of the stakeholders um and to align common goals uh so that we can uh, promote the um, the circular economy uh, in a really integrated way, um, um, and yeah, uh, basically our our uh, several waste policies that we have implemented uh, actually provide us to have this uh, uh, really resilient uh, strategy. Uh, and uh, we are uh, from all of this. I can just mention that we we are committed to become a zero waste uh, uh, certified city, uh, as also showed. Uh, earlier on our roadmap, uh, which is a process that is provided by the Mission Zero Academy. And uh, yeah, I believe that the rest of the things I kind of already mentioned them. Um, just to, to let you know some 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 specs, uh, I, I, I could highlight for uh, in here the, um, the, the actions that we develop with our community because education is really important. Um, we are preventing uh, a lot of uh, quantities of food waste and also uh, after preventing, which, which should be always the first step, we are also looking forward to recover the waste um, as possible. Uh, and we have other um, areas as well in which we are working besides uh, uh, the bio waste. Um, uh, now, to, to focus a little bit on the bait system, uh, we implemented it and it was a pioneer project here in Guimarães. Uh, uh regarding the other the other cities of portugal um we, we i think the, it's interesting to see uh the 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 process uh, in this in this scheme because 
um we we were uh, of course it took a lot of work in the in the beginning we had to to work with uh, with the citizens that, as i explained previously eventually we were able to 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 do to have a change in the tax regulation um and then we we started to to work with uh, with the citizens uh, and the the other stakeholders the Eureka channels the, the restaurants and uh, um other parties involved to that to, so that we could start collecting the bio waste and what we actually figured out is that as you can see along the time we were able to um um, reduce the the mixed waste uh, representation, right? And we were able to increase um, um, the recyclable uh, waste and also the, the kept rate, which means the the um, the the amount of bio waste that we eventually could recover um, in a higher manner. So uh, we this is is also interesting to see because. Bio waste is is definitely one of the priorities that is also coming from the the, the European Commission with a, with a, with a, with a state members to to actually focus on bio waste and in Portugal we were supposed to to have that um, already fully implemented uh, in in uh, in the right now in this year but uh, I know that not 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 everyone is doing this. Awareness is also doing it really well, but not 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 all the cities in in Portugal are doing this, and it's really important because by uh, promoting the bio waste um, collection, we are also promoting the selective collection of other kinds of wastes, and this is um, also related to the way we have our paid system uh, implemented, um, because uh, I'm not going to to uh, talk too much about this, but um, just to, to let you know, basically we have two different systems uh, that we implemented, which are two different tariffs. And basically our uh, consumers uh, have by default the tariff B, which is kind of an estimated production by user that they pay uh, to Vimago, which is our, our water company. And uh, um, uh, if the, the 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 customers want to change uh, to the tariff A, they uh, acquire uh, bags um, for um, indifferentiated waste and bio waste, and they pay for those bags, and that is the the the, the variable tariff that they 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 pay, and um, the bags for selective collection are, are provided free of charge. And this way, we we are we were promoting the able to promote the the, the also the the collection of recyclable wastes. Um, okay, not going forward. Why? Okay, just to quickly for you to understand. So in the method B, there's um, a predefined uh, calculation on the variable rates. That either home user or non home users have to pay, um, and when we talk about the method A, by acquiring the bags, we have effectively a, a, a reduction, and it's it's different from the from what the citizens would have to pay if they get with a with the usual uh, tariff. Um, so um, we also like to highlight the importance of communication. We also always try to do this with our projects uh, we we allow the citizens to understand what we mean by this rate simulation uh, by this um, uh, to understand to, to help them understand what they can do we also help them with uh, explanatory brochures and documents to help them understand how they should separate their waste uh, and where they should uh, deposit and how they they should uh, also deposit it um so just to give you an idea of numbers from last year uh we we already reached a lot of either domestic which is ud and non-domestic users uh from coffees restaurants commerce hotels local accommodations and also other kinds of institutions 
and we are in different stages of implementation. Um, and uh, that also leaves us to the to, to our uh, main strategy that later on we we matured uh, in the in the in the last few years few years, which is the recyclo strategy. Um, um, as I said, uh, since the, the beginning of this year, it's mandatory in all municipalities in Portugal, and we created a, a tariff to benefit those who separate the waste and also compost it as its source. Uh, I can't, I don't have time to go over the, the website, I guess. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I was receiving a call. Um, but uh, yeah, just to let you know that uh, again, uh, through communication, it's really important for us to let consumers know uh, what is our strategy, what what is the municipality strategy uh, in terms of bio waste, uh, to explain them what circular economy means, and this is our platform, which later on you can visit uh, for this link over here. It's important that you put the EN, so otherwise you'll see things in Portuguese. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, that's, that's also really important. Uh, just to let you know that we also have done uh, studies previously and we understood that actually a lot of the, the, the composition came from bio waste. So by attacking this, we were able to promote the, um, the, the selective collection of other kinds of, uh, of wastes. Um, this is uh, uh, another diagram to, to let you know that uh, in this year, we, we expect to collect around 6,000 tons, uh, which uh, for bio waste uh, is, is a lot, is already a lot. Uh, and we expect to keep increasing this text by um, uh, improving our, 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 our current system. Uh, we, act we actually have, um, this this collective, this uh, collection available in, in in some some parishes in the municipality, and we are expanding them uh, for uh, other municipalities. Again, the importance of engaging the citizens regarding what they should and should not uh, separate in terms of the bio waste, so that later on we have a compost that is adequate to the needs that we will have in our community gardens and farms. Um, we show the consumers um, our strategy and the way we are thinking about doing this project. We show them the schedules in the right. Uh, you can see these are the, the, the places where we, we, we are currently doing the, the, the bio waste collection. Um, and now we are uh, doing something uh, new, um, which is going to start this year which is the save as you throw. Um, uh, similar to the paid system, what we intend to do with this is to give a refund of the variable tariff of the waste uh, for the users that prove that they carry out uh, their own composting at home because they can require for free a composter and they can do it at home. And then they have to prove that they are doing it to us. They have to send pictures and, and all, and then we will pay them the, 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 we will give them the, the 50% refund. Um, in another way, if they are just buying the, the, the bags to do the, the, um, the bio waste collection, we also give them that, that money back. This is um, our implementation strategy. We, we are looking at uh, different moments in time right now. Um, Basically, uh, we started uh, in the left image uh, in the center of the city, but along the way, we we can see the, the middle is the goal for next year, 2025. And uh, the in the right, we are uh, looking forward to expand until 2028 for the entire, uh, entire municipality. Um, uh, we also promote... Um, biocompostable bags at local markets. Again, we need to prevent the, the bio waste production. Uh, and uh, uh, we need to make sure that um, citizens understand the importance of this initiative. And we, we also are uh, going to do an activity uh, this month in the Europe European Week on Waste Production 
we will distribute boxes to restaurants so that citizens can take their leftovers of the food that they eat, they eat to, to home. Um, um, so that they, we, we are not going to, to throw away food that can be uh, eat, eaten later on. Um, this is what I was showing to you. Uh, this is on our, our website again. Sorry, because the, the right is in Portuguese, but it's basically an expression. We have we also have a manual to, to, to let citizens know how they can also do, do composting. And we have uh, uh, educational activities in that sense as well. Um, people just need to fill up a form and they can start producing their own fertilizer that they can later on use on their community farm that they can look for. Uh, we have a lot of space. Um, and the, uh, besides the, the bio waste, it's also interesting to let know about our strategy in terms of the green waste, which uh, is happening all the time. <laughs> uh, and just between 2016 and 2023, um, we were able to... Uh, to work um, with schools um, and basically we uh, gave them bags of firewood that they uh, used to heat to heating purposes in the schools so this uh, is also we, we we also see the we currently see the schools and the the, the education institutions as um, as a starting point because of the importance of the next generation. So uh, if we start to do this with them, uh, we kind of have at the same time, the educational initiative and the practical initiative. So we can align both of them and make of it the best example to other initiatives. Um, this is also uh, some pictures uh, so that you can see our community farms. Basically, it started with just a little bit and we are already expanding it a lot uh, and we are looking forward to be able to have more, more spaces. Um, and we do uh, constant work with, uh, with the citizens to help them uh, to produce the, the, their own um, food, to use their own fertilizer in their own food. But by this way, we will be closing the loop. Uh, our goal is to recover 73% uh, of the bio waste by 2030, and we look forward to do that. Um, and, uh, this is also, sorry about, about the Portuguese, is just to let you know that we have a strategy that along the way uh, is helping us uh, see uh, what we we want in terms of the 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 capture rates and the, the, the amount of bio waste that we collect. Uh, so yeah, we, we kind of are looking forward to, to increase by uh, a lot of, uh, a lot the, the, the quantity of bio waste that we are collecting. Um, these are also some pictures about some initiatives. We try uh, to put it on the buses, to put it on the bus stops, um, to engage the community the more we can. We we do different projects and we are always worried about talking about um, um, uh, bio waste. Uh, for instance, this is a project, Rit60.com, um, that was more focused on the, um, the correct, uh, like the promote the um, the alimentation so the people would get nutri nutri nutritious uh, foods and so on but we were worried about uh, making sure that we have other things and thing that you can see is like actually textile waste that was used to make like a, a jar and then they could cultivate micro vegetables that can be used uh, uh, by everyone in their own homes for instance uh, and yeah, also we can see other initiatives that we do. These are the bags that uh, the, um, the collectors, the the workers do put on the um, on the on the on the bins. So if people are doing things well, we put this. If they're not, <laughs> we put this. Also let them know that they should be better. And this also creates an effect of. Um, uh, community engagement and shared responsibility because uh, I'm not going to want to be the one that is not doing things well. 
Um, okay, so now going to 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 the textile textile waste, which was also one of the themes that uh, we wanted to to bring to you. Um, yeah, so basically we are we are starting on textile waste. We have a lot of work already done as well, and we are doing a lot of work. Um, uh, not with so much expressed results as we have on bio waste. But yeah, indeed, we, we know that uh, only 1%, and this is uh, uh, explicit in the Circular Economy Action Plan for the European Green Deal, uh, less than 1% actually is recycled into new textiles, which, which is really alarming. And given the fact that in our city, uh, basically 25% of, of, the, of the industries are related to, to, to textile production and clothing production, so we, we need to... To, to, to get a focus on stack on textile this is this also is important for you to understand and I think that all cities should take this in, into account if we are going to implement circular strategies we need to know the industry representation we, we need to know to know what is important to go with, uh, first okay um and yeah uh, basically we 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 consider in Europe that we produce 11 kilograms and in Guimarães we have a higher value. That's why it is important for us to work on this. Uh, and yeah, um, there's a lot of impacts in terms of water and cell resource use. Uh, it's the fifth larger in terms of primary raw material use and, and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and there's still a lot, of, a lot of waste that ends up in landfill. Um, uh, an interesting example, uh, uh, masks are not... <laughs> actually a, a textile but uh, uh, it's interesting because we have done a project uh, in during the pandemic and we collected around 20, uh, 25,000 disposable masks and then we transform transform them into this kind of hangers and uh, decoration for for Christmas Christmas and we offered them to to shops hotels and schools um uh, and I think this, this kind of projects, are also important to also see what are the, the, the engagements we can get for the population, that, that they can see that their waste actually can be turned into something valuable. Um, this is, is a campaign that uh, we are, we are uh, sharing as well, that we have been working on. We currently have, uh, again, the focus within the schools. We already have a system and we, we put it, um, uh, this, um, it's been if I can you can see my okay. Uh, it's been so that people could uh, put their, their their textile waste, um, and basically we already uh, recovered uh, twenty five tons, and in partnership with with uh, uh, companies that work with us, we were able to uh, do, um, recover and make of that waste blankets and reusable bags that you can see also here in this picture and in these pictures you can also see the bags and the, the blankets that later on again we are giving to the population to let them know to to make them understand that actually circularity is possible and can be done in an in a local way yeah um so this is uh the the the, the program that we had we 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 can see here it's written a uh, uh, a plastic free market because we were hoping to promote this we 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 use this kind of bags uh in our um uh city markets um so that uh, we would try not to use uh, plastic bags that we know eventually uh, are a problem if we are using unnecessarily um and uh, we also worked well with, with uh, a lot of educational activities, mainly with younger audiences, so that we could uh, let them know what it was all about. Another initiative that we had is the secondhand markets, uh, which we decided to do regularly on the first and third Sunday of every month um, in the municipal market again. Uh, again, to provide the, them the, the, the opportunity to also engage them by selling the things that they no longer used. I, I personally already done this and I, I've, I've sold, <laughs> I, I sold clothes that I wasn't using anymore. And it's, it's cool. Uh, it's something that everyone can do. And 
eventually uh, what is not useful for me can be useful for other people and we can sell all of these kind of things um uh and yeah it's it's really important to 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 let people know that this is something that can be done between us as a, as a com community um okay so basically another important uh, partnership that we have is with restore which is an incredible example of social inclusion powered by circular economy. Basically, um, this is a brand uh, that was also born in, around the pandemic. Um, and what they do is that they transform textile leftovers of the industries, and we have a lot of industries, as I told, uh, and they make uh, useful accessories um, um, at the same time uh, uh, working with socially vulnerable groups. So uh, we go to institutions um, with leftovers, okay, with waste, and with people that are more vulnerable, we give them a purpose. We are also helping them to find a, their own place in the world and their own contribution. Uh, so this is like a huge added value uh, and people like this a lot. And in the last 36 months, uh, around six tons of fabrics uh, from the, the textile industry has, has been upcycled uh, through through Restore. Uh, actually, I've been <clears throat> I've been with the CEO this week, and uh, another thing that they've done is they they've done like this kind of um, uh, beds uh, to dogs, okay, uh, um, made with textile waste, and they've done that with uh, prisoners of a prison, for instance. So they they are connect somehow. We, we try to connect the 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 different aspects, both both uh, sustainability in a social way, uh, also in an environmental way, okay. Um, and also interesting initiative is the the to be green. A platform, uh, which is also a company that we are we we, we work closely with. Um, basically, the application encourages uh, the the clothing swaps um, into into different kinds of of of, of new products. Uh, the the images I was showing you earlier of the bags and the blankets were were in collaboration with this and they have these three levels of action uh the exchange of clothing between the citizens which is like a first level and then they catalog the clothing um which then allows the the, the education division uh, and, and 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 social action of the city council to uh, align the service to to those who need this type of support so again uh, sustainability, not only thinking about the environment, but thinking about the people. Um, the recycling of textiles in the in the in the last level of action, um, uh, allowing the creation of new uh, new products is also something that we are currently uh, working with. Not only this idea is the bags and the blankets, but we are looking forward to do different things. Um, so for some conclusions, uh, we we got around <laughs> different kind of difficulties and uh, uh, challenges. Uh, indeed, the, lo the the local involvement uh, is 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 a challenge. Uh, also, textile collection and sorting is also a challenge. Yet, um, the in terms of the bio waste, the low quality of the collected bio waste. Is is still a challenge. Although we try to 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 educate the most the, the most we can, we are aware that we need to keep doing that so that people actually know uh, how to do it. And there's also the challenge that we have a really diffuse territory. Uh, earlier we were talking about the um, the taller buildings and how that uh, represents a challenge in terms of waste collection. Yeah, uh, basically if we have a territory that is different. Uh, is is different. We we need to to adapt ourselves and have different kind of of of, of solutions, and we need to have this uh, position of trying to test different solutions at the same time. Uh, and yeah, that's why we keep uh, uh, working on actions to overcome these difficulties by having new collection systems, keeping our networking with stakeholders, with projects, uh, with commitments, uh, develop awareness awareness and communication campaigns and actions. 
uh, so that we can uh, uh, keep up uh, with the good work that we have been doing so far and make sure that we uh, uh, will reach the, the goals that we want. Just another note that I haven't put it in the presentation, but we, besides this, this we are also working on uh, two, uh, several projects, actually. It's more than two. Um, regarding, uh, we're trying to figure out what's the best way to value the bio waste into high added value products um, through a, a, a support scheme uh, in the Circular Cities and Reasons Initiative. And we are also working on two different projects to develop circular strategies for textiles uh, and in which we are going to work uh, precisely this kind of um, value chain connection. Uh, yeah, and just <laughs> to end, thank you everyone. Uh, I, I think that we, as we are gathered here today, we, we are reminded of the power of collaboration, right? And the resilience that we must have as communities and this project is actually a, a testament to these spirits. And uh, despite all the challenges, uh, I believe that uh, Ukrainian cities is, are working tirelessly to, to build uh, sustainable systems. Uh, so let us draw some inspiration for our shared determination and so on, and uh, believe that we can create a future where waste is, is minimized and somehow we are able to make communities thrive. So. Yeah, thank you for your attention and I'm free free for any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much.